Hello all, welcome to my channel TechSense. Here we will discuss what is single sign-on, why it is required, how does it work at backend, and if we want to implement single sign-on for dynamic CRM, what are the components required, and what steps we need to configure at ADFS level to achieve the same solution, and if we stuck somewhere, then what is the troubleshooting ideas? Let's understand what is single sign-on. Single sign-on is a property of identity and access management that enables users to securely authenticate with multiple applications and website by logging into, into once with just one set of credentials. For an example, I have one user who needs to access five applications. And just assume if all the five applications have different set of active directory, then users need to remember credentials for each application so there will be total five credentials it will be very difficult for the user to remember all of the credentials and password but if we implement single sign-on there will be only one credential there will be only one credential that he needs to use to access all of the applications for example uh, if you notice whenever we log into linkedin it gives you option to log in through facebook also so in that case your linkedin and facebook credentials will be the same because LinkedIn is using federation metadata to authenticate and in the same way there are multiple websites Amazon there are there are many shopping websites also they give you option to log in through Facebook or Google except using their you know maintaining their own repository it comes into handy also whenever let's say user leaves the organization then the then the team the infra team needs to deactivate that user in all of the applications but if there is a single sign on there will be only one active directory so the account management is very easy in that process let's understand how does sso works so first of all users hit the url of the website which is tries to access then in the back end website configured in such a way that it will re redirect to your sso website then SSO website is attached to the identity provider. If identity provider authenticates the user, then user will be able to access the application. So in my case, basically in my organization, there are multiple applications set up, but they have their own active directory. So it's very difficult for the user to remember all of the credentials. So what we are implementing right now, there will be only one active directory and one identity provider in my case it's active directory and uh, there will be one you know one repository only so that user can access all of the applications at one go and once user log into one application that he need then he need not to log in again if he wants to log into other applications so that is the requirement basically in my case uh, what we are trying to set up there is a dynamic CRM. It's one of the applications. As, as I said, right, there are multiple applications set up in my organization and we want to implement single sign-on with all of the applications. Dynamic CRM is one of them. So I'll take example for this application and we can follow the same steps for rest of the applications as well. So in my case, it's dynamic CRM and we need ADFS server also uh, because we have to implement IFD. And to implement the IFD, we need ADFS server. If you are from dynamic CRM domain, then I think you are able to get uh, what I'm talking about. And then ISAM as identity provider. It will work as identity provider for all of the applications in my organization. So what is the proposed solution? User will log into my dynamic CRM. Request will go to ADFS because that's how it works as a default uh, process also. So but now since we uh, we are going to implement adfs and uh, you know we are going to implement single sign on so adfs will redirect the request to isam isam is the identity provider in my case but there are there are many identity provider tools isam is provided by iabm basically then isam will authenticate the user with with that ad and then send the token back to adfs then if credential if credentials are valid and token is valid then it passes the token to dynamic crm and then user will be able to access the crm application so let's start uh, how i configured the steps in adfs to achieve this solution so as we know if we have set up the adfs server there will be one federation metadata url and in adfs server we must have installed certificate as well 
because it's publicly accessible right so we need a certificate also so both these things the certificate and the federation metadata we have to provide these things to the identity provider once i provide these two things right then isam team will configure in their product what isam team will do they will configure the services with the help of the federation metadata provided in step 1 remember uh, we provided the federation metadata url to them and the certificate so they will also install the same certificate at their product in their product and once they configure isam also will provide you the federation metadata so they will give that their own federation metadata to us and that url we need to configure in adfs server basically in step 3 whatever federation metadata url isam provider provided in adfs server we need to add the claim provider because the first claim provider was ad active directory in our case but since it's a single sign on we need to add another claim provider trust because now isam is the claim provider so we need to add the claim provider trust as you can see in the picture once you open the adfs you can see this option once you cl click on the you know claim provider trust and add claim provider once you click here you will be able to see one pop up it will look like this once you cl click uh, the, the pop up will look like this and there will be three options the first one is you can mention the url the second one is you can import in my case they gave the xml then i imported into the into the you know adfs claim provider trust wizard and the third one is you can enter it manually it's a time taking so i choose the option second then based on the claims right because it's a different identity provider so the claim format will be different for our adfs the claim format is like you know it comes into namespace it accepts the upn it accepts the primary SID. But ISAM is not like that. ISAM format will be different and their claim type is different. It, it basically depends on the identity provider. For ISAM, it's like that. For other identity provider, maybe it's a different thing. So we need to see the claim type. What are the claims that are coming? As you can see in the picture, right? Their claim type was name ID. And that was the format. You are an IBM name, ITFM, access manager. In, in ADFS, it's a namespace. But here, the namespace format is like that. So that's why I created the rule. Uh, once you try to add claim rules, right, for a claim provider, you'll get multiple options. You want to create a pass-through. You want to uh, filter it. Or the third one is, and the third one is transform an incoming claim. Because we need to transform it since the source is different. So I cho choose that option, transform an incoming claim. And then the claim type that is coming is, incoming claim type was name ID. That was the format that I mentioned. And that is because my dynamic CRM accepts UPN. So that's how I chose outgoing claim type is UPN. So that's it. I just added claim provider and added the claim rule. and that's it that is what we configured and it was working in isam also i can without logging anything i can access my dynamic crm application as well uh, let me tell you uh, while doing all this process i got the difficulty also i got so many errors and how i pass through all the errors there are some troubleshooting methods so first we can look for the saml traces what are the claim types are coming what is the form so inside the saml traces right everything is there in the claims what is the namespace what are the information that is coming what is the format then only i'll get to understand okay that's ibm name that is the format coming and that's how i configured in adfs also we can enable the adfs tra tracing in event viewer where the adfs is set up you can enable the traces also and you can compare the logs and you can check also you can monitor the browser logs as well and that's how it is if you have any issue, please write and comment to me. And if you like the video, please like it and subscribe to my channel. Thank you.